Hey guys, so for this video I want to show you um, spiral wedging. Spiral wedging is a technique that is a little bit more efficient in terms of like how quickly you can expose the interior of a mass of clay to the wedging surface. It's quicker, it's a little bit more useful because it uh, you kind of end up with a cone shape, which is perfect for the potter's wheel, but it's very, it's like difficult. It's like a more advanced technique. So between the sort of regular wedging technique, ram's head technique video, and this one, you should be good on wedging. So spiral wedging gets a little bit easier if you can begin with a cone, a slight cone shape. Right, so bang whatever you have around into a ball and then just smack it on the table and you'll start to get it into some kind of cone shape. Eventually you can start with a square and end up with a cone, no problem when spiral wedging, but right at the outset when you're learning it, it can be more difficult. So um, if you can get something that's slightly cone shaped like this, that would be a little easier for you. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is flip it over. And I'm gonna show you this from a couple different perspectives, but um, flip it over so that the point is on the bottom. You're gonna take the flat of your left hand and that's gonna be um, basically on the bottom of the cone and you're going to take the flat of your right hand and put it at 90 degrees to your left hand so they're making a triangle like this and the clay is going to be in the middle so the first thing we're going to do is basically just hold the clay on those two opposing angles and then we're just going to push forward and twist and you can see not much has happened right just my two palm prints in the clay but what's cool is when you lift it back up and do it again those two areas become like a point where the clay shears and starts to fold over on itself. So let me do a few of these and I'll show you just what I mean. So look at all that folding, right? Each time you pull the clay up on its point and then push it forward and a slight twist, you'll get all of this material folding over on itself. It's pretty cool actually. It, folds over on itself and then it comes up and it wraps around into this sort of cone-shaped mass up at the top. So a little bit more slowly, that was just so you know kind of where we're headed. A little bit more slowly, you're going to pull the clay up on point here. Then you're going to take the bottom and the side and give it a very slight twist and move forward. Try not to let your wrists bend too much, you want to keep them fairly straight, just a slight twisting motion. Uh, one other thing, if you kind of slightly interlock your thumbs, that'll keep you, that'll help keep your hands in the right position. So at speed, something like this. And you can see in order to get the clay up on point, I pull it up with my right hand fingertips just like that. And then I'm up in the air and I can push back down and twist. Pull up, twist starts looking like a conch shell, something like that, and you know you're kind of in the right uh, neighborhood. Now, if you start to see anywhere where the clay is folding over itself, you know, these are like really tight little folds, but I mean where, you, where there's like a gap of air inside some of the folds, you gotta be careful. You'll, you'll have to adjust your technique a little bit because um, you can start to fold air into the clay as opposed to remove it, so, you know, it takes some practice, but it's worth learning. This is how, this is how potters wedge for the most part. Okay guys, so again, we're gonna turn our cone-shaped piece of clay over, and the, the flat of the left hand is gonna go on the bottom. The flat and fingers of the right hand are gonna be at 90 degrees to that, just like this here, and then um, the thumbs are gonna overlap slightly. And if you keep your um, left thumb over your right thumb slightly, I think it'll help keep your hands at the right angle to one another. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just a little forward um, push, and you can even use your body weight and fall forward. And um, you're gonna just push a little harder with your right hand than your left, and that will give you just a little bit of a twist, just like that. So you can see the two imprints from my two hands, like that, and that's actually the beginning of the twisting motion, or the spiral that you'll get from spiral wedging. So you can see my thumbs are tight together and this is basically what spiral wedging looks like. I'll of course do it very slowly for you, but I just wanted to get the clay into the right shape. So what this looks like is pulling the clay up on the point like a seashell, the point here, and then you're gonna just twist a little bit, it's very easy to overdo that twist. It's more about twisting a very small amount many, many times rather than forcing the clay down into the 
table. So don't push very hard, just do it a lot of times. Um, so pulling the clay up on the point with my right hand fingertips, and then we're going to just give it a gentle twist. Pull it up again on the point, gentle twist. Up again, gentle twist. And you can see kind of getting, all the clay is getting exposed where all of these folds are and compressed against the plaster surface on the back and then rolled back up into this cone shape. So we can compare our two different wedging styles. This is more of a cone. This is more of like rolling a barrel. I think that this technique is preferable because it's a little less, uh, it's actually a little less work once you get the skill down. Um, you don't have to keep inward pressure happening here. It sort of also ends up as a cone, so that's more effective because it's like a little bit quicker to get right to the potter's wheel. You, you have to roll this up into a barrel shape and then make it into a cone, so that takes time. I don't know, most potters I know use the spiral wedging technique and prefer it. So I think it's like just a little bit more efficient. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do a little bit more here. And then I'll show you what I mean about rolling this into a cone. So if you really gradually reduce the pressure of each push and twist forward until the clay just sort of rolls itself up into a cone shape like that, you can see that would be really easy to pop right on the wheel and center and you're ready to go. So that is uh, spiral wedging for you. Let me show you one more time. You can see here I have my two separate examples, the basic ram's head wedging technique, uh, good for maybe up to three or four pounds, that might be pushing it a little bit, um, and the spiral wedging technique. This technique can scale um, up to 25 pounds. You can wedge quite a large piece of clay this way. So that might be another reason that potters really um, kind of typically wedge this way. The spiral wedging technique is, I think, a little more efficient. This is a great way to get started and to learn. And actually, this scales the other way. So this technique is not so, not so great for larger amounts of clay, but like, I can't spiral wedge one pound. My hands are too big, it just doesn't work. So I use this technique for like one pound, one and a half pounds if I'm making cups or something. And this technique is like going the other direction. So larger amounts, smaller amounts. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.